Welcome to Geeks 4x4, home of the Bob Excursion, and today we are going to talk about how the excursion did at Jeep Safari and talk about some major carnage that I had with some parts causing things, not parts issues, more rock issues, more, I don't know, some really big things. There are lots of bent parts in this. I'm going to show you guys some really weak points that I just found this trip, and uh, we're going to go over overall how the truck did and what I thought of it. So. Let's get right to that. Uh, if I saw you at Jeep Safari, man alive, how much fun was that? I am glad that you guys came. I'm glad that I got to meet you. Uh, if I didn't see your Jeep Safari and you saw the truck, I'm glad you saw the truck. Uh, but why didn't you say hi? Come on. Uh, but anyway, this is the Bob excursion. I've chopped 12 inches off the back of the truck. I've chopped five inches off the bottom of the doors. It's got 40s on it. It's not really lifted. It's also coil swapped. And I just installed a four link. I just installed um, the headers and got rid of some exhaust leaks and those headers worked really well all week it doesn't seem to leak too bad yet maybe a couple times it leaked a little bit but i really don't hear it consistently um the uh coopers did really well the method race wheels uh did their job let me show you guys why i didn't want black wheels let's talk about this um see this that's what happens when you actually rock crawl with black wheels and you scratch them, that happens. And so that's kind of annoying. Um, one thing I added to the back that I really liked, I'm gonna try and do this in one take. We'll see what happens. I've got lots of noises around me, so that'll be entertaining for you guys. You never know what's happening. I added this little uh, brake here for the fridge so it doesn't slide back and forth. That works really well. I still gotta tie the fridge down into the space that it is, but uh, yeah, other than that, it, it worked really well. Um, rock sliders, I don't even think we touched them on anything. Rear bumper, we we did hit the rear bumper on something. Uh, coming down, I don't even know what it was. A really massive waterfall. We hit the, the springs a lot, actually, is what we hit now. Uh, and you can see there's a little chunk missing from the rear bumper. Um, my fender cutting seemed to work really well. Although it did look like it does look like it bent this out again, so I don't really know what's going on there. But the tires really trying to move up into that space. Uh, in the front, on the other side, I ended up cutting this whole thing off, and it looks like I got to do it to this side too. Uh, let me walk over there. I'll show you guys what I did over here. About midweek, we were starting to feel some real rubs, and I just cut this whole lip out of here, uh, and I took it like back to I don't know right in here somewhere and that really helped with the tire trying to take the fender off um i bent the tie rod a little bit i hit a rock that i didn't see and i tried to drive over it with the tie rod turns out the tie rod is not helpful to drive over things front bumper works super well we dunked it into mud you'll see some videos on that soon um did slam it into something ended up moving this light with a rock and uh, other than that, it worked great. Just got out and tightened the rock. All right, well, I promised there was some major carnage. So I gotta crawl underneath there. Like I said, this is a live video. Uh, not live, but I'm gonna try and do one take. So this will be entertaining for you. I'm gonna get down here. Hopefully the mic will stay attached. We're gonna sit right here. All right, so you see that control arm mount there? Yeah, that guy is supposed to be straight up and down. It's not. So I ended up bending the frame with the control arm out. PMF, you make a solid bracket. Uh, so we actually bent the C of the frame, bent it a little bit on that side, but really not near as much. So if you're gonna run a four link like this, you need to box your frame right above the mount. So uh, I'm gonna go in and box the frame. I don't really know if I'm gonna keep running this four link. I kinda am thinking about building the three link. The four link does work really well. It flexes really well. It's actually, it's, it's really nice. But um, I don't like how much ground clearance I lost. I beat the bottom of these arms up, as you can tell. There's some, there's some good wax that both of them got. But as, as you see, look at that bracket. It bent this top a little bit, but that's because the frame bent. And if I straighten the frame out, that bracket is in good shape. So I'm really impressed with the PMF bracket. When I initially did it, I thought I bent that bracket. And I was gonna be like, PMF, what happened? But no, uh, I bet the frame. So anyway, we've got some, some major, major bends and major fabrication to figure out. 
it's not that big of a deal to box the frame, but on the driver's side, that's where the fuel lines are and all that stuff. So um, you can't box stuff over the fuel lines and the fuel filter. So we're gonna have to redo some fuel lines and fuel filter and bend the frame back, then box it in, then figure out what I'm gonna do with suspension. Yeah, all the stuff. But anyway, overall, the truck went up just about everything that I pointed it at. I had it a little bit low on transmission fluid and I got up to a really, really steep thing uh, with a bunch of us in it actually. And it just wouldn't move. And that was kind of fun. Uh, but I put, I don't know, two thirds of a quart of transmission fluid in it and it didn't do anything like that the rest of the trip. So, I don't know, Hopefully, hoping it was just low. I never really got an opportunity to put it on that steep of a thing again to see if the torque converter did drain every time. Um, we'll try it again at some point. But other than that, man, this thing, yeah, I forgot I'm doing one takes and I keep burping in this. This is gonna be fun. You guys are gonna have random like little burp things in this and a voice crack and this is all good stuff. But anyway, um, um, yeah. So anyway, we're, <laughs> The truck is great, guys. The truck is absolutely incredible. Everything we pointed at, we climbed Wipeout Hill, we climbed up the top of the world, we uh, did Hell's Revenge, we did fins and things, we went out behind the rocks a little bit. We, the truck is so good. This thing is so capable, even without lockers, without gears, with all this stuff. I am so excited and so stoked that I get to have this truck, and this is something that I get to use. So I appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate everybody that I was there with. We've got great friends, uh, great followers, and man alive, uh, I'm just so grateful to be able to do this. So anyway, there's your EJS recap, big carnage. The truck did drive home with the frame rails bent. It actually picked up the transmission cross member. And so the transfer case that was really close to the floor when I left, is pretty much touching the floor now. So, uh, that was fun on the way home. Nice and, it's like a massage seat pretty much most of the way home. Anyway, it was fine. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna let you guys go. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you guys on the next one when we're fixing stuff on the Bob Excursion and doing other stuff on the White Excursion. And we're even working on a yellow Jeep in the garage, which is why all my excursions are outside. The poor babies. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.